Have you seen or felt a change in the marketplace? Today, I'm talking about the five adjustments you must make in order to guarantee your success in any market. Welcome to the Tom Ferry Show. Today, I want to set you up for success. Let me ask you a question. If you knew the market was going to make an adjustment in the next 18 to 24 months, knowing what you know now about your business, about the natural cycles of the real estate industry, what adjustments would you make? Well, what if I told you over the last five months, I've been getting that phone call from CEOs of real estate companies and from top producing agents and brand new real estate agents that are walking in and saying, something just feels strange about the market. Well, if you study the trends as we do, right? KCM, matter of fact, recently put out a report that said we've experienced six recessions in the US since the mid 70s, two of which had a pretty significant impact on housing. Certainly, if we reflect back to 2007, 8, 9, we all can remember that experience. Now, my question for you is, knowing what we know, about the market, about real estate, about the cost of money going up, about inventory in the current situation that it's in, knowing what we know now, what would you do? Well, the opening of my summit, I'm walking you through 12. Today, I'm going to share with you five of the most important strategies, mindsets, and tactics I'm recommending to all of our coaching members, not, my friends, in any way, shape, or form trying to create any fear about the market, but instead, one of the most important disciplines every great CEO, every great entrepreneur has, and that is the ability to anticipate and adjust. So if we can anticipate the change and make the adjustments now in your business, two things happen. Your business becomes bulletproof, marketproof, ready to dominate regardless of what happens, and secondarily, if nothing happens, what happens? Your income skyrockets. So let's have the right mindset as we look at these five points and what you must do to prepare for what is most natural and automatic, which is the cycles just continue to change. So here's my five things I want you to start with. Number one, acknowledge, are you a hobbyist or is this a business? Now that's not designed to be offensive. I'm certainly not trying to slap you in the face, but I'd like you to consider that the vast majority of agents around the world are hobbyists. They're not running their business like a business. They don't know their numbers. They're not making analytical decisions. They're not thinking through innovation and marketing on a daily basis. How do I surprise and delight my clients? No, the vast majority of them are trying to figure out how to answer their phone on time and should they buy leads or not. So I'd challenge you, as you go into this next level of real estate, this new change in the economy, can you survive as a hobbyist? Can you survive selling five, six, eight, 10, 15 homes a year, mostly by default, or is it time for you to shift your mindset and your strategy up here and every day in your business to be by design? Think about it. No more being a hobbyist. Now you're running a business. So that's number one. Number two I wrote down for you. Again, there's 12. I'm just giving you the top five here. Multiple lead generation sources is the solution. You've heard me talk about it before. The vast majority of real estate professionals, because the economy has been so good, have relied aggressively on their database. And what happens is, my friend, when you become myopic, singular focus in terms of just one thing that you do to generate business, any hiccup to the market, and you're out of business. Which is why we've always said, from 16 years ago when we started this company, the very best agents have four to six different lead sources. No different from if you needed to fish to survive, you wouldn't show up to the spot where there's no fish. You'd go where the fish are and you get as many lines in the water as you can, as many opportunities for you to attract buyers and sellers to bring your service to them and ultimately help them buy and sell real estate. And listen, my friend, too many agents today with those two or three they might be using, they're doing it, dare I say, half ass. Could that be the first time I've cursed on the Tom Ferry Show? I apologize. But I really want to get this point across. The market doesn't care if you don't do your marketing. The market doesn't care. Buyers will find a real estate professional. Sellers will find a real estate professional. If you're not you know, sending up smoke signals, doing your social media, making your phone calls, sending out your direct mail, doing your email, no one cares if you stop. But you will be out of business. So that's number two. Number three on my list, 
They live inside their CRM. Now, think about how simple this is. We know that there's two kinds of agents, right? Agents with a CRM and agents without. And when you look at our studies, nearly 64% of the people we talk to, 100,000 people a year, 64% either have no contact relationship management solution, CRM, and a chunk of them think that Outlook on their phone is their CRM. Listen, my friend, I'm telling you as a business coach, I'm telling you as a student of business and marketing, we've got to have a beautiful CRM with all of our contacts bucketed and organized by group with the frequency of how often I'm going to speak with them, text them, email them, send them a video, whatever you choose to do. But here's the deal, you ready? The consumer has choices. And just like with multiple lead sources, we know that your business from your past clients in Sphere still should represent 30, 40, maybe even 50% of your business because you're staying in communication and you're bringing them value. So if you're not living inside your CRM today, my friend, your business is going to struggle as things adjust. Just like if I look inside your CRM or your phone and I see Larry, 310-555-1212, and you have no idea who Larry is, there's no last name, there's no email, there's no address to mail to, you're also being myopic. You're, you're making your business only a call or maybe text, when sometimes a handwritten note or a direct mail postcard is gonna be a better way for you to reach them. So really it's they live inside their CRM and let's be clear, they've taken the time to organize their database in a way that they know who their very best are and the frequency of touch and who are those people that they're trying to figure out who are these people in my database and how do I nurture those relationships and bring them value so they get into that B and C category. So those are the top three. If I asked you just to stop right there and said to you, hey, are you in business or is this a hobby, right? If you don't have a CRM or your CRM isn't organized, I would challenge you to say you're a hobbyist in today's business. Now you're like, Tom, you're coming across strong. Remember how I started this video. The market adjusts. It's not me, it's not you. I'm not negative, I'm a realist. When the market adjusts, I want you to stand up and win and be proud of the business that you built. And let's face it, there's gonna be some waves crashing and some people are gonna get rumbled and tumbled. You, my friend, have the opportunity and the anticipation to adjust to ride those waves to success. And that's what those first three points are about. So let me share with you number four. The intelligent agent, the strategist going into this market is gonna ask themselves, am I safe in terms of where I'm marketing with my price points? Is there opportunity for me to move it up or should I really be paying attention to the movable middle or maybe even the lower end? I was working with thousands of agents post 9-11 in the high-end marketplace, and as you can imagine, probably remember, the high-end just died for about six months. The smart agents already have those lower to mid price range farms and marketing strategies and ad spend, so guess what? they continue to sell a lot more property. Yes, at a lower price. Yes, with lower fees and commissions. But every closing is a good closing. And serving every customer is a good idea. So from a strategy standpoint, number four is look at your business and ask yourself, what's my average sales price? What's the movable middle? When the market slows down, which part picks up and which part dies? And make sure that you're not myopic in your pricing. So let's look at the last one, number five. I actually just had this conversation with a personal client and I can tell that there was, I don't wanna say fear, but there was some worry in the back of her mind. She's like, Tom, what do I need to do? I mean, I live inside my CRM. I've got nine different drivers of, this is a $150 million a year producer, small team, family business, doing it the right way, very operational minded CEO of the team. She said, what else do I need to do? And I said, my most important advice for you is start to stockpile cash. The market's good right now. She's selling a lot of stuff in the bread and butter price range and has a pretty decent amount of stuff in the high end. So when these are popping, they're savings. This is running your life and running your business. I said, every one of these that we sell, we need to stockpile the cash. And she said, if I stockpile the cash, do you mean so I can buy when the market adjusts? And I said, that would certainly be a good strategic move. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm telling you as your business coach, that when the market adjusts, when things get a little different, 
what's the very first thing the vast majority of real estate professionals stop on a dime? What do you think it is? It's their marketing. It's their marketing. They panic, right? I don't know what to send. I don't know what to say. I'm, not, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna kill all my online advertising. I'm not gonna do my email. I'm certainly not gonna spend money on direct mail. And overnight, they put themselves out of the business. And as soon as I said it, she got it immediately. She said, oh, I've got the cash to keep my business going. I've got that nice war chest so I can get more market share. Now, this particular girl just turned 40 years old. She really hasn't been around through the real estate business long enough to know that in every changing market, when it's going like this or it's like this, that's when the phoenixes come out of the ashes. That's when all the best agents show up. Matter of fact, if you were to Google right now, when have the vast majority of the most successful businesses on the planet, when did they get started? In almost every case, it was during a recession or a depression. She got it immediately. So here's my question for you. Knowing what you know, and especially if you're one of my veteran friends watching, and you were around as I was maybe in the early 90s, or again during 2007, 8, 9, if you were around, knowing what you know, what do you need to do? That, my friend, is the question you need to answer and then get into massive action and create as much accountability as possible to make sure that you're following through on the disciplines to make sure your business is market proof. So, I know kind of a heavy show. I can't wait to see the comments. We probably need to link up, guys, the last KCM article so everybody can see what we're referencing from all those recessions from mid-70s forward so you are more informed and more empowered. Now remember, when things change, people get in their head. When you're in your head, you're dead. I've said to people for years, look your neighbor right in the eye and look him right in the eye and say, your head is a scary place to be. I'm not trying to affirm that. I just wanna make you aware that when things adjust, people create fear. When they create fear, they create doubt. When they create doubt, guess what? They get into a state of paralysis. And when you're in a state of paralysis, how many phone calls do you make? How much marketing do you do? How much proactivity do you do? No, you hide. And if you hide, you're dead. We gotta keep our mindset right and follow through on these five actions. And I promise you, your business will ride right through this and you will be an extraordinary real estate professional. Thank you so much for watching. I can't wait to read your comments. See you soon. Hey, I'm Tom Ferry and I wanna say welcome to real estate. Now, there's a pretty good chance no one's told you there's an 87% failure rate every five years in this business and there's only two factors. Agents don't have the tools and they don't take the right action. I'm gonna invite you to click the link below and get access to the tools so you can win in this business.